Good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, today we put together a video for the um, Honor Society at St. Louis Community College Forest Park. I called for the assistance of two of my brothers in a um, video presentation of this. One is my brother Zul, he's behind the camera. He's helping out with the um, video part of it. And then I got my brother right here, Malachi, he's gonna help me out with some of the reading material. So it'd be help, help you know, more quickly for me to um, talk through the presentation. So again, this is for my African American Studies 2, and um, African American History 2 class, and for my Intro to African American Studies, both for Professor Dorian Brown. Again, my name is Jay Strader. Brothers that assist me is Malachi and Azul. And we want to read to you something real quick about the Copyright Act, but we're going to also give um, sites, um, a bibliography page for all the information that we use. Yeah, right here, uh, this is the fair use act or fair use definition. Uh, it says a fair use, a legal doctrine that portions of copyrighted materials may be used without permission of the copyright owner provided. The use is fair and reasonable, does not substantially impair the value of the materials, and does not curtail the profits reasonably expected by the owner. So again, this is for free, not for profit, and not to, uh, to digress from the material that's being presented. So let me give you a quick synopsis real quick of what this project is detail. The focus of this project was show that the biblical people of antiquity in the Bible were African or Negroid in identity. Second, the evidence will search and point out where they are today and will make the historical connection that the African Americans are the biblical Israel. So I think the fr first place to start would be definition of what Ham is so we can understand who these dark people are and where they are. Ham, according to the Zondervan Dictionary, Zondervan Bible Compact Dictionary. You can order these online at any bookstore. Arthur is T. Alton Bryant. Mr. Walker. No, Ham. This is on page 213. It says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood he became the progenitor meaning the father of the dark races so him is the father of what race the dark races all right continue not the negro oh, wait, wait. so he's the father of the dark races but not the negro race. not the negro all right okay, continue but the egyptian Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. All right. So what we have, we basically can see that we deal with two groups of dark people. So we got people who say we're here under hermetic exegesis, which is not correct. We're not Ham. All right. We just read that, and that Bible is um, that is used by most um, seminary schools and in most churches. Right here, this is the ancient table of the nations. This right here is called the Bible Atlas by Holman Quick Source. And this right here is a book of uh, maps, biblical maps of the ancient world. And on page 94, it said that Ham was the son of Noah, born 96 years before the flood. If you know anything about history, after the scattering of the Tower of Babel that we read about in Genesis 11, the descendants of Noah's three sons uh, scattered to their inheritance. In Ham's case, it was Northeast Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia, which is ancient Kush, Egypt, Mizraim, or what the, uh, the uh, African brothers called it today, uh, Kemet, mm -hmm. uh, Libya, Northern Africa, and then the ancient land of Canaan was right here. This is the land that, that they call Israel today. But if you notice, it's one solid landmass. All right, so these are the sons of Ham. This is Northeast Africa. This is the, the lands of Shem, Noah's oldest son. This is more like what they would call the Middle East today, but notice it's still one landmass. Some landmass. And then Asia and parts of Europe, Jaffa. So that's how the brothers settled after they got up off the ark, right. after the Tower of Babel and the scatter. Perfect, perfect. We definitely appreciate that. And we make sure we're going to try to give you all the sources, all the books, all the maps that we can. Yeah. All right. Also, what I want to look at too, 
we're going to see that um, we're going to deal with Abraham because he was the first Hebrew, according to the Bible. But real quick, we're going to look into the Jewish Almanac. And we'll see that on page 3 of the Jewish Almanac, it tells us that um, it tells us strictly speaking, it is incorrect to call an ancient Israelite a Jew right. or a contemporary Jew an Israelite. All right, and that's in the 1980 Jewish Almanac. And the reason why is because those people converted to Judaism. Yeah. All right, but we'll discuss that further on in the video. Which is a religion that was never given by the Most High. Exactly. All right. Uh, right here, we got next is uh, Anacalypsis by Godfrey Higgins, who actually was a, a Freemason, actually. Lived during the 1700s. All right? Now, on the back of his book, he has an interesting quote the bottom paragraph of it. It, say, it says, in, Are you ready? in consequence of prejudice, for it is really prejudice against the Negro. Or I ought rather to say against the possibility of a Negro character. I admit with great difficulty. You said he admit with what? Great difficulty. Okay. The theory of all the early astronomical knowledge of the Chaldees having been acquired or invented by his great racism, and that the Chaldees were originally Negroes. Ooh. So it's telling you all the ancient astronomy and math and, and science and all that. Ancient, the ancient land of Chaldea and Mesopotamia was known for that. Exactly. You know, that, that whole area, that was the area Abraham was from. And uh, uh, let him know why, why he was called the Hebrew. Hebrew the word Hebrew, Hebrew originally it, it means Hebrew, which means to cross over. Cross over. All right. And so this is what we're going to go into the Genesis account. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 12. And the reason why we're taking this route, because one, we see that um, Ham is presented of the dark races, but not the Negro. <clears throat> but then we see that Godfrey Higgins, which is a well-known, you know, you say Mason, and he did historian. historians, yeah, yeah. Exactly. that he did the work and showed that the Chaldeans were a Negro race of people. Yeah. Yeah. So this lets us know who the very first patriarch was, yeah. a Negro. Yeah. Amen. All right? Yes. A black man. Yep. All right? So we're going to go into the Genesis account. We're going to see this. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter Amen. 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So again, we get a chance to see that Abraham was called out of the Chaldeans, but we yeah. we didn't get the word yet. But we're gonna give you Genesis 14 and 13, mm -hmm. so you can we can start seeing it. Then we'll go to the New Testament, yeah. so we can see it's one complete story. Yeah. yeah all right. Sure. So Abraham was called to come out. Yeah. All right. Cross over. To huh? cross over. That's what the word he wrote Crossed over that Euphrates River. Exactly. You feel me? All right. Genesis 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. The who? The Hebrew. So Abraham was called the Hebrew. Yeah. He was the first. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eskal, which, which are African. And I'll just say, Amorites are African people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eskal, and brother of Anur, and these were confederate with Abram. So, so Abraham had, our forefather Abraham had allies mm -hmm. amongst the uh, Hamite or Hamitic brothers who we would call Africans today. They were all dark skinned people. Exactly. You know, but. But the way you dress, how you worship your God, your culture, what you eat, the where terms, name you came from, the land you came from, the language you speak, the customs you keep, determines what kind of dark-skinned person you are. So this is why identity is important. Yeah, it's very important. Very important, very important. because it shows you who your friends were, yeah. who your allies were, yes, and the nation you belong to, and everything that was entitled to you by birthright. 
applied first, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to go now, we're going to hit this Acts chapter 7. It's going to bring this whole story together. And again, um, while the brother getting to the page, understand, also discuss with Brother Dorian in the class, and also from the other research we've done, there have never even been a European even break the borders of Africa until after the 1400s. And so even before that, what was the people we were dealing with? All right? And so it then, again, another thing, we get to see that we had an understanding between each other with those people. But we can go ahead and get this and we can see Abraham and actually where he came from. You have the book of Acts, meaning Acts of, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 1. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, meaning listen. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. So God appeared to who? Abraham. All right. When he was in Mesopotamia, Ooh. before he dwelt in Haran, and, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country. We just read that back in Genesis. And from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans. So he came out of the land of what? The Chaldeans. And we read that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Yep. So we just wanted to kind of give you the foundation that the patriarch of the first Hebrew, the father of all the Hebrew nations, was a Negro, a black man, not related to Ham. Right. All right. And even Godfrey Higgins admitted, he said he admitted with great difficulty. With great difficulty. Godfrey Higgins actually was a so-called, you can call it Caucasian today. Yeah. You feel me? He lived in the 1700s, but his research and his study led him to, to understanding that, look, these Negroes, all the astronomical knowledge we got, the math we got, the science we got, this knowledge, the land of in the land of Mesopotamia, Chaldea, was known for this. We just read that in the Book of Acts just now. Yeah, yeah. And Abraham was called him out of that land. Because right. most how was going to deal with him. Yeah. So verse finish verse four. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein he now dwell. And that was the uh, uh, disciple Stephen talking to our forefathers right before he was executed. Exactly. So now we're going to see, and we're going to journey down, and we'll see kind of what happened. Because in many places you go, you still, people still preserve the biblical images of the ancient Israelites or Christ. And you would notice that he'll be Negroid in color. There's um, many pictures still in Russia. Many people, many pictures still in the Jewish civilization book. There's many pictures in the book that the brother finna show you right here. He's gonna give you the book cover. Right here. The ancient world. Hurtis International Library of Knowledge. And if anybody has uh, any type of research, you know who on this front are Egyptians. Dark skinned people. Correct. And what we read out the Bible dictionary, these are sons of Ham. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now, these are Egyptians. Right? The cameraman is always get a close up. This is page 58. Up here by my finger. This is historical right here. This is an ancient picture of what our forefathers, the Israelites, who are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are who you would call Jesus the Christ today. These are his four, his uh, the, uh, ancestors. This is an ancient mm -hmm. picture of what the Jews look like. Mm -hmm. Israelites, and when I say Jew, Jew in the Bible, not Jewish, not Jewish, not one who's real word or none of that. These, these are the ancestors of the Negro here in America, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Now this right here, the caption says, "Top, a Syrian soldier drives Jews into captivity. Look at the locks and the nappy birds and all that. A Syrian soldier drives Jews into captivity." The Assyrians conquered Israel in the 8th century B.C. Anybody know history? That's like 722 through 725 B.C. The 10 northern tribes of Israel were took down by the Assyrians. Some Jews were deported, but the king of Assyria brought new settlers into the country who intermarried with the remaining Israelites. Again, one more close up on that. That top corner. That's a historical depiction of what Israelites look like. So it's impossible for a whole nation of people like this 
to leave looking like this and then come back looking like Steven Spielberg or, you know, uh, whoever, other than what they're supposed to look like. Exactly. And also we have another book, um, we was talking about out of the ancient Egypt, um, me and Brother um, Brown, Professor Brown, had discussed about Gerald Massey. Gerald Massey also goes on record and says that the dignity is so ancient that the insignia of Pharaoh evidently belonged to a time when Egyptians were nothing but the girdle of the Negro. And that's on page 251. Now understand that makes more sense when you look at the Genesis 42 account and when you follow, um, we'll give it to Joseph real quick. Genesis 42, 48. Yeah. The book of Genesis, chapter 42, verse 8. We can probably hit three real quick. Okay. Kind of hit three so we see, you know, Joseph. Okay. Uh, want me hit one? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Genesis 42, verse 1. Now when, now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. And this was during the famine. So we understand the story of Joseph. He had interpreted the Pharaoh's dreams. And then it's even depicted on the um, hieroglyphs that Joseph was called Imran. It's a little circle with an X through it with a sickle on it. All right. And so what was going on is that Jacob was sending his sons, the ten, to go up to Egypt to get some food for the famine. Yeah. Verse, no, verse 3. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother Jacob, sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. The sons of who? Israel. Ooh. Came to buy corn among those that came. For the famine was for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. He was called Imran. He was the governor, correct. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. So his brothers walked up to him and bowed down to him. All right. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them. So Joseph knew his brothers, but we're going to find something out. But made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So we, we know the land of Canaan is what? Where Israel is. Yeah, it's where Israel is. Mm -hmm. All right. which, which, which is uh, one southern landmass with the continent of Africa. Yeah, it's called the Africa. Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joseph, verse 8. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. Now I explain. You have to understand. The reason why we're reading this is so you can understand. Now we already heard Gerald Massey say that these people were Negro in the cup. Knew that. All right. So if he was European, or if he was Caucasian, which you would call today, how would they not know him immediately when they saw him? Exactly. Amongst, amongst these people. All right? You have a European standing amongst a Negroid people. They would have knew their brother instantly. But he changed his voice, and they didn't even know who he was. That's how much he looked at just like those Negroid people. Yeah, the Egyptians showing you that the sons of Shem and the sons of Ham, you feel me, are dark-skinned people. You got you got Egyptians who are descendants of Ham, and you got uh, descendants of Abraham who are descendants of Shem, and they can't even tell each other apart. If if the Israelites are so-called white people, like the vibration is put out today, when Joseph, being a son of Israel, was in Egypt as governor. Uh, having provision over all the corn, when his ten brothers showed up and bowed at his feet, and bowed at his feet, they should have recognized him because he'd been the only white person, white person in the land. Yeah. Yeah. But see, what happened is what you have is what they call a kind of class. If you look up a kind of class in the dictionary, it's known as a person who destroys religious images or opposes their veneration. Here we go, right here again, out the ancient world, right here. We're going to show you how that was exactly being done. 
It's an actual, it's an actual depiction of it right here on page 93. Right here. And it shows the desecration of a religious image. They would take their uh, dip, their dipping wands and uh, 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 dip them in acid and they would go over the uh, religious icon. And you have this manner of um, work still done to this very yeah, day. Because they don't want you to know how great you are. You, it, it's deeper than just Africa. Like, our people have graced the globe and were great everywhere we went. We gave the world its greatest monuments. Yeah. We just heard astrology, medicine. From my history books, um, Professor Brown, we already know that you know we have multi-dimensional men amongst us as a people. Yeah. And then we also um, going to look real quick into the Bible to see if the Bible gives us some type of prophetic understanding how this happened. Yes, sir. Because understand, there is nothing new under the sun. And so again, science, school teachers, everybody use the Bible as a biblical resource or to piggyback off of it in research. So we're going to give you an academic reference and then we'll give you a biblical reference to see how they sing it in the horn. All right? You don't want to have something you're listening to it in the horn. Exactly. So we're going to go to First Maccabees Michael chapter 3. All right. So we're going to go into First Maccabees chapter 3, verse um, 48, and see how this iconoclast was prophesied in the Bible. Yeah. First Maccabees chapter 3. And uh, Maccabees is in the Apocrypha, which is part of the 1611 King James Bible. All you got to do is do a little research and you'll see the Apocrypha was part of the Bible. He authorized it. This is First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. So he opened up this book. Mm -hmm. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Ooh, so do you understand what happened? So like what you have right now, what most people have in their houses now is a Eurocentric Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And see if I got my history book. We had a Eurocentric Jesus Christ. And in that Eurocentric Jesus Christ, that's a picture of Caesar's boy Jesus. Yeah. All right? I'm going to let the brother explain that real quick. I'm going to find you another picture from my African-American history book from last semester, African-American History 1. Where they had a picture of Christ in the Congo, and he was nipping. Ooh, <laughs> serious. This right here is the second witness. Look, to I didn't it. have to go that far. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. See right here? This is a picture of Christ. How they viewed him then. Show me what got him crucified, flat, Congo, Democratic Republic. Right. This is how they picture Christ then. The crucifixion black shown here carved out of eye. That's the type of work we did. Great works carved in Africa, showing how Christ looked in the Congo. They discovered this in 1874. This picture of Christ. Straight bro. And he had that bird. No, the Hebrews, we didn't cut our bird. Yeah. That's how another lot of nations knew who you were yeah. based on how you dressed. We yeah. talked about that earlier. Yeah. And the matter like we wore bird and locks. Yeah. Which some call they dreadlocks, unfortunately. Right. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given to who? Into the hand of the wicked. Who controls Africa now? Who has colonized the whole continent? Who right now that we have to answer to at this point? He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Exactly. So that's what happened. They covered they what happened was during the Renaissance, which means the rebirth of who you would call so-called Caucasians, start desecrating all the images that uh, our people had set up. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a well-known fact in the ancient world, and uh, even back east to this very day, that the children of Israel are dark-skinned people, that Christ was dark-skinned. You feel me? Uh, and the Most High himself, all the ancient depictions. Woolly hair, dark skin, voice of many waters, Daniel angels, seven. all that, man. Daniel like, 7 and 9 to be yeah. exact. And we're not pumping idolatry or telling brother to put up images, but the fact of the matter is, Beast the Bible Beast. prophesied about a time coming where people will be covering the faces of the real judges of the earth. The top judge is the most high. And in, his honor, son. in honor of his son. You see that? 
And then it said, Know ye not that the saints gonna judge the world. The saints are those who win the covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. According to the Bible, those are the children of Israel. So how do they cover up the faces of the judges of the earth? What they do, they whitewashed all the images. So now when you should hear brothers say that we are Judeans or we're Hebrew Israelites or we we'll say we rock with Christ, you think Caucasian. You ain't made the connection that this book has to comes from an area of the world in which it was all dark skinned people. Exactly. You feel me? I mean, actually, yeah. you can read a couple of those. You know, sit here while we're talking about it. Give me a perfect example. Give me some Job 30 30. Job 30 30. And here to explain, and this is early in the Old Testament, so we'll give you that. Also, I'm going to read real quick from um, while he's getting Job, we'll give you real quick on Numbers chapter 12. Verse 1 and 10, we'll see that when we deal with Moses at this point, all right, when yeah. Moses and Mir exact Miriam, I'm sorry, I appreciate that, it, um, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. <laughs> Moses married Ethiopian woman, that's a white boy. You hear what I'm talking about? <laughs> exactly. In Egypt. <laughs> Come on, man. Right. For he had married an Ethiopian woman, and there was a cloud that came off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam had became leprous, white as snow. So if she became, what you say? Leprous, white as snow. That's what she became when they spoke out against Moses for marrying a Hamite. Now that wouldn't make no sense if Moses and her was already white. Right. To turn somebody a color you already are is not a miracle right. at all. Leprous, white as snow. All right. So what color was she if she was turned to that? Exactly. Had to be a woman of color. Had to be a woman of color. Dark skin, what the brothers call melanin today and all that. Will he hear all that? We get that Job 30 30 real quick. The book of Job 30 30. My skin is black upon me. Woo, my skin is what? Black upon me. Woo. And my bones are burnt with heat. So he's talking about darkness. I'm going to give you a picture real quick. My right, brother looking for another. I'm going to give you a couple of pictures real quick. So you can see. You will give me one about the family? Yeah, Jeremiah Jer Jer 14. Yeah. You got that one? Back a little bit. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dirt. Huh? Mm -hmm. Shoot the morning. Meaning the true Jews are in morning. In morning. And the gates thereof languish, meaning no protection. If a, if a town doesn't have any gates, there's no protection. Languish, meaning it's weak, no leadership for us. They are black unto the ground, Ooh. and the cry of Jerusalem is going up. So we're going to a time of famine with us. And we as a people, when we uh, go through famine, we naturally get dark. Right. You feel me? So, and Lamentations 5 and 10 speak on that even directly too. Yeah, Lamentations 5 and 10. Uh, but this is one thing. So-called Caucasians don't get dark when they go through famine. They get I painted. I got some pictures here. I actually got some pictures from the Jewish Holocaust, yeah. which we was there about almost 40 years before they even got yeah, there. Yeah, the German and, and Black Holocaust. And we was freed at the same time, but you don't see them erecting no museums about that, do you? Uh -huh. This is Lamentations 5 and 10. Our skin was black like an oven. Because of the terrible fact. See that? So we get darker than what we already are. Our skin don't be shining. See, when we're not going through famine, you know what I'm saying, our skin actually shines. It glows. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But when we go through yeah. famine, we naturally get darker. Uh, Caucasians don't do that. That doesn't happen to Caucasians. I'm going to pull up a couple of pictures from that um, so we can look at that as well. So we can see what we're talking about. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 21. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. I am what? I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. You see that? So, I mean, it's all through the scriptures, the physical, uh, physical appearance of our people. You guys have pictures And even Paul, and even Paul in the New Testament. Acts 21. Acts 21, verse 38. He was mistaken for an Egyptian, and his reply was like, no, I'm not an Egyptian. I'm a Jew. See that? So showing you that according to the Bible, according to biblical history, 
that the Egyptians and the Israelites are dark skinned people. Now this right here is to show what we talked about how the brothers uh, speaking on that. Yeah, that's a good one. Hold it up. This, this, right right here, there this is this. actual this is the actual pictures from the Jewish Holocaust. Alright? How they had him in the camps. How this right here, he was in famine, all of them. They don't get dark. No. They don't get dark. Yeah, you would wouldn't you call this a famine? They're not eating. See, what happened to the Jews when we go, the real Jews, we go through famine, we get darker. Our skin don't be glowing. You know what I'm saying? These people get pale. And it's just about the truth. Trip off what a real Jew told somebody who thought he was an Egyptian. Acts 21, verse 38. I'm going to start at 37. And as Paul was to be led to the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? He was tripping because Paul was bilingual. Exactly. He could speak Greek, Hebrew, Latin. Check this out. This is what dude say to Paul, verse 38. Art not thou that Egyptian? Oh, so that we back to that again. Joseph got mistaken for Egyptian. Exactly. Moses, all of them. All these people, Moses grew up in Pharaoh's place yep. as his grandson. Now that would not have worked. Right. Because he just put the order out to kill all the Hebrew boys. What he would have looked it like to his people yeah. if he would have kept one European boy as his grandson. Right, right. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he had put the order out. So understand that these people were a Negroid people. Yeah. Read again. It says, Art not thou, art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, Four thousand men that were murdered. But Paul said, "I am a man which am a Jew." So he told me, he corrected. I know I might look like them. an Egyptian. I might be dark skinned like an Egyptian. But I'm not like them. But I'm a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia. Oh, I'm not Italian. Mm, showing you that dark skinned men were living in also uh, what you would call Europe. Exactly. And we got pictures of the first inhabitants of Rome. They were not white folks. Check this out. Which led 4,000 men that were murdered. But Paul said, I am a Jew, which am a Jew, but I am a man, which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So again, we get to see that Hamites and Israelites look just alike. And then, he, and then uh, when Herod was seeking to kill Christ, where they go? They escaped into Egypt. Into Egypt. Now, if Christ was blind eyed or that European picture you see of Caesar boy James, he would have ran into Egypt. He could hide among these people. He would have got caught <laughs> instantly. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna go through a little bit more that and we're gonna see the, the, the exile of Israel. Yeah. Actually, matter of fact, I'm gonna read that right now out of the um, encyclopedia of African Encyclopedia. Okay. I had it at the college, but I couldn't bring it home, but I did do a screen for it. So it says right here, dealing with the Ethiopian Jews. It says, the East African nation of Ethiopia has been the home to a Jewish community for many centuries. Mm. All right? Mm. It says, outside of sometime called the Ethiopian Jews fellation, mm. which means moved mm. or gone into exile. Exile. Right? Exile. In ancient Gee's language, that was the forerunner to the modern language of northern and central Ethiopia. Now it says the origins of Judaism in Ethiopia remain a mystery, but it is likely that the community roots extend back for 2,500 years. 2,500 mm. years. So that's before Christ. Exactly. That's been an Israelite culture mm -hmm. on the continent of Africa for over 2,500 years. Mm -hmm. Over 2,500 years. Now, we're going to read further right on down the line. We're going to see more and more of this as we get into Ivan Van Sertima and the other people speaking that in the 1800s, when they saw you come out of Africa, you was either Arab yep. or Jew. Yep. And they wasn't speaking to nobody of a Caucasian descent. All right? I so. Alright, so next we just uh, we hit that so we gonna hit that that fact I just talked it up. We're gonna hit that um, I have been certain. We never showed these uh, ancient pictures of what these E fools look like. We skipped the picture history. Oh, I apologize. Oh, well, books, you hit that real quick? Yeah, we we, we follow the bibliography page um, to kinda keep us in line and order. So we're gonna backtrack one time to um
Spanish right here book. is called a picture history of what they call Jewish culture, civilization. All right, and um, to show you this is not black propaganda, none of us put this together. But when you go into history, there are undeniable proofs that the Hebrews of the biblical period were people of color, or people of color and their descendants or part of the transatlantic slave trade. That says Hebrews of the biblical period. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it says. You see that? And, and it's impossible for millions of us to look like this and now that we just vanish. And now we're all so-called, you know, what they would call Caucasians. And this says right here, a Shemitic, a Semitic prisoner. So he descends from Shem. Again, Shem. Yeah, so this is not an album, but, but take words out. This says on terracotta, the period of the 19th dynasty. Woo! 19th dynasty of what? Egypt. And this is a Shemite prison showing you that children of Israel who are Shemites were held captive in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it's documented in the hieroglyph. Yes, it's it documented. Is. It is. You got a couple more of these pictures right here. You, this right here says thousands the thousands of war captives because this false vibration to say the Egyptians never had slaves. The thousands of war captains who were transformed into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their feats of engineering. Chained captives were shown these painted clay facing plaques mm. from a building erected by Ramses the second. So we have the pharaoh name. Mm -hmm. All right. In honor of the king's brave warriors from the period of what? The 19th dynasty. These are dark skinned people with yokes on their ne around their necks. They've been conquered by Egyptians and it was a slave force that allowed the Egyptians to build mo a lot of those treasure cities. Just the same way you had a so-called Negro in all the captivity through all that building. Even in America. All the great building, Ben Banneker. Like you have right now, you have Ben Banneker who, who finished out the um, construction of the White House. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we have a lot of great, great minds that the African um, have added, or the so-called Negro have added to this country. Wherever we went into captivity, they flourished in their yeah. captivity. Yeah. Greece, Azrian, Rome, um, Babylon, Egypt, America. Yeah. Wherever we go, they use our ingenuity to build these great places. We need the children of God. The scriptures say in Acts 17 that we are the offspring of the Most High. So you need, you need the children of God to build your empires. It's just what it is. So we're going right here. We're going to the African presence in Europe. Mm -hmm. Authors Ivan Van Sertima. Yes, sir. We'll give you a quick three pages so we can see that Ivan Van Sertima, who is a very well-respected historian. He just gave up his ghost not too long ago. Yes, he did. But um, he's on page 275, we'll give you page 277 and 78. This right here, I'm going to read a little bit on the back. It says, the book is divided into six parts. The first Europeans, Africans, African presence in the ancient Mediterranean Isles mm. and mainland Greece. Africans in the European religious hierarchy, Madonnas, saints, and popes. Presence in Northern Europe, African presence in Eastern Europe. Page 275, bro. Yeah, 275 and then 277 into 278. Page 275, it says, Zaris, it says, Zaris officials were completely indifferent to the fate of non-Russian peoples inhabiting Russia. Non-Russian people? Inhabiting Russia. Russian statistical data, or data of that time, referred to Africans. Okay, so we talking about the day. This is how they view. This is how the Russians view Africans in the 17 and 1800s. Okay. As Arabs or Jews. As who? Arabs or Jews. During the time, and look, the transatlantic was still going on. Yeah. So they didn't look at the Europeans as Arabs and Jews. They looked at the Africans as Arabs and Jews. This is what Ida Van Sertum is saying. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Page. Who we at next? 277, about the last paragraph, I believe. Last paragraph, 277. It says, Leo's praise of his countrymen is proof that Africans are not typical of the beastly lineage reported by European 
Renaissance voyages. So what we're talking about is Leo Africanus. Yeah. Now I don't really have to go into a lot of explaining Leo Africanus. We know um, for the record who Leo Africanus is. He didn't get any sense to map out yeah. Africa. Yeah. Right. No doubt. No doubt. And he say, notice what he said. He said Leo's praise of his countrymen is proof that Africans and no and no and when it says Africans, a lot of people lump every dark skinned person on the continent of Africa as one person. It's never been like that. See, it ain't it's talking about the chip the Hebrew Israelites that dwelt in West Africa and North Africa and parts of East Africa. You know what I'm saying? So when it's saying African, we're not saying all the cultures on the continent of Africa are united in one. We're showing that it was a great presence of our people living on the continent of Africa. We have always been mistaken for Africa. Always, always been even mistaken. back to biblical times. Right? So it says we was in Russia on this one. Yeah, yeah, and it was and it was saying that look, they need the Jews or Arabs. It says Leo's praise of his countrymen is proof that Africans are not typical of the beastly lineage recorded by European Renaissance voyages. Renaissance meaning rebirth. Rebirth. And when they start whitewashing all the images. Kind of kind of class. If you was always ruling Europe, why did you have to have a Renaissance? Why you gotta have a rebirth if you was always on top? Mm. Leo quotes from the biblical chapter of Genesis. Ooh, so whoa, whoa, whoa. So again, like we said earlier, historians, scientists, authors, even people who go out and survey the land, Leo Africanus, even he had knowledge of the biblical scriptures, the Torah, yeah. and the Tanakh, which is that time, at that time, yeah. no, and the New Testament. The New Testament. All right, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. Had knowledge. I just wanted to point that out how, how he's be, so, be going back to the Bible. Check this out. It says, Leo quotes from the biblical chapter of Genesis to the Negroes and Tawani Moors. So hold on, the who? Negroes and Tawani Moors. And Moors means black, so a lot of Moorish brothers were Israelites. Were Israelites. Yes, but we're going to go into that too. Yes, so we're going to cover a small piece of that. Cited, by, by, cited by Europeans as being different by nature due to their complexion are both descendants of Noah. Ooh, so he had just made the connection that these dark people, mm -hmm. these Jews are descendants mm -hmm. from Noah. Yeah. And we just read the son of Ham. Yeah. One of the sons of Noah, so just the dark races, but not, not the, the Negro. Both descendants of Noah, all of which opinions and reports are to be understood only of the original of the Tawani people. That is to say, of the new Moodians and barbarians, for all Negroes, or black Moors, take their descent from Cush. Cush. Ooh, that's Ham. Check this out. Check this out. It says, for all Negroes, or black Moors, take their descent from Chush. Oh, okay, so he said Chush. Shem. Chush, Shem. the son of Sham, which is Shem, who was the son of Noah. Correct. See, that Sham and Shem is another way. It's, it's, it's the same way. Shem is more modern. Sham is more ancient. All right. It says. It Appreciate says. That, but that was yeah. perfect it says descent from Shush, the son of Sham, who was the son of Noah. Mm -hmm. But whatsoever difference there be between the Negroes and the Twenty Moors, certain it is that they had all one beginning. Woo! So he said there is a difference between yeah. them, but they had one beginning. Yeah. No, it came from Noah. And Noah said it came from Noah and Sh and, and his son Sham or Shem. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's where we at with that. So now we're gonna go. Um, my brother Zor, you know, he he got a book. Um, it's the history and the um, description of Africa, uh -huh. actually written by Leo Africa. Who we just was reading about. Who we just was reading about. So he goes into a further explanation of this. All right. Okay, we're here at um, the history and description of Africa by Leo Africanus, page 129, about the original of the Africa. Our historiographers do much disagree, but some will have them to be derived from the inhabitants of Palestinia, because as they say, being expelled out of their own country by Ooh. the Syrians, they came at length into Africa. So you see, like we just said, that part of the Assyrian captivity. You will also read about that in the book of Maccabees and the Apocrypha books. Yep, the Kings, First Kings, I mean Second Kings, chapter 17 as well, mm -hmm. about how Syria took down our forefathers. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. showed the picture earlier with brothers going into captivity by the Assyrians. Correct. 
And they was and they was brothers with uh birds, what they would call kinky birds and kinky earth. Yeah. Alright. Now we're going to page 163. Those Africans which inhibited Libya and Numidia. So that's what they inhabited when they went into the exile. Was each of them was each of them worship some certain planet unto whom likewise they offer sacrifices and prayers. Some others of the land of the Negroes worship Gugimo, that is to say, the Lord of the heaven. And this sound point of religion was not delivered unto them by any prophet or teacher, but was inspired as it were from God himself. After that, they embraced the Jewish law, where they, and they were said to have continued many years. Ooh, wait, wait. Go back to that Jewish law part, when they came into their understanding. Cause see, that understand that you know that that culture had been in Africa, been a, and Leo Africanus just told us he yeah. recognized yeah. that there may be some differences, but they had one originally from um, Noah. Mm. So Leo Africanus again goes on record in his other book, saying that the, that this Jewish culture was there. And afterwards, they professed the Christian religion and continued Christians until such time as the Mohammedan superstition. Prevail. The Muhammadan ooh, ooh, superstition. superstition. They call it Islam. Because <laughs> Muhammad came in as one of the last major religions on the earth yep. around about 570 to 630 AD. Now we're going down to page 202. Jews are undoubtedly among the oldest of the foreign colonists. Of North Africa. What did Leo Africanus just say? That Jews are what? Are undoubtedly among the oldest of the foreign colonists of North Africa. Showing you that we've been staying on the continent of Africa the whole time. And they said we the oldest foreign, you feel me? Because where we at, where we came from, you feel me, on down into what you know is the continent of Africa. Our forefather Abraham came from Mesopotamia. He crossed over to the Euphrates and then started dwelling amongst Hamites. Feel me? His seed went down into Egypt, served for, I mean, was down there for 430 years, and then came up out of captivity. Mm -hmm. You got some more reading that group that is? Ancient tombstones buried under the sand mm. are said to exist in Sus. And a late rabbi, Mordecai al Syria Aki, believed that he had found in Dagratus an ancient Jewish colony. Uh. To this day, they are found living among Arabs and Berber tribes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. This is to this early. day. That was in the late 1800s. And we just heard though not speaking, And though not speaking any language except that of their neighbors. Wow. So they just blended in and spoke those native languages. I'm showing you, man, the world been lying, man. The faces of the churches have been covered. Exactly. But we just read the biblical prophecy of that. Yeah, yeah. Showing you that the Bible is inspired by the heavenly Appreciate it, brother, for that reading. All right, right here, y'all. This is uh, this is the history, not the history, the Columbia history of the world by John A. Gary and Peter Gate. Right. Page 289 Jews in the Arab world, and page 291 shows how they successfully converted us. You feel me? Because and that was that Mohammedism superstition, superstition that, that came. Prevailed. Because yeah, and, yeah. and we look even in my history book from my last semester, which I showed a few times, it talks about those great fights that they had. While he's reading that, we'll look it up real quick. The Battle yeah. of the Trenches, the yeah. Battle of Kaibor, the Battle yeah, exactly. of Banu, Kali, yeah, all right. those. Yeah, they had to. They got to get you to get up off your God before they can conquer. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And that's what happened. Uh, page 289, chapter 25: The Jews in the Arab World. The Jewish experience under Islam began with, the ma with massacre and expulsion from the northern half of the Arabian Peninsula. Mm. The Pact of Umar, although historically questionable, nevertheless reflected the prevailing attitude of Muslim rulers and jurists, infidels, meaning unbelievers to what they're talking about, mm. deserve protection only at the price of displaying marked subservience to Muslims and their faith. The persecution and humiliation endured by the Jews of Amahe, North Africa, Ooh. 1147 to 1276. 
Come on. This is even before Leo Africanus went and did his thing. Mm -hmm. Before mm -hmm. the slave trade and all that, man. Mm -hmm. Then you know these are dark skinned people right here. And the Zaydi Yemen, 1165 and after, were unmasked in their brutality by any Christian state prior to the anti Semitic excess of 19th century Tsarist Russia. That's it for that one. And then page 291. Page 291. As, as a tolerated people of Scripture, trip off that. <laughs> as a tolerated people of Scripture, the Jews of Babylonia, like their Christian neighbors, were classified as a protected minority to be governed directly by an exilarch from their own ranks. Besides keeping the peace of the Jewish community, this prince was to be accountable for the regular collection of the poll tax and other special tributes imposed by the Muslims on all the conquered peoples. Mm. Huh. So we even a minority then because we had been doing all that scattering, renew, reduced our numbers. No, no. No. Definition of a coup, according to Mecca, that's what happened. And that's what you just heard in the book. He said there was a coup. Yeah, that was a coup. And it says right here, a brilliant, sudden, and usually highly successful stroke or act. That's what happened with, with, with uh, when the Mohammedans came in and uh, you know converted our people. It was a coup that went down. It was an overthrow. First, first uh, stronghold is our mindset. You know what I'm saying? How we serve our God and all that. So if they can never get you up off your God, then they can conquer. Because our God means our power. You feel me? God comes from the Hebrew word, which means power. Or powers. And that's exactly what had to happen. Understand that this captivity, unlike those, because they learn as they go. Right. This time they made you forget your language, your God, your name, your nation, your whole, wherever you came from. Again, it's the worst type of identity theft. Yeah. Not only did they take your image, and they took it and changed it. They took your land and they took everything from it. Yes, sir. All right? Because now, also, when you read, like, in places like, I'm going to give you one, like, the Universal Jewish Almanac, it tell you that 92% of the people are, uh, that claim to be Jewish are actually from Oz Kenazi. Now, we're going to read out of Genesis 10. We're going to see Oz Kenazi is coming from the land of Japheth. So those people that are dying, even there's another brother, who went on record and said in 1956, was it um, the more I Yep. He said that y'all would never have no peace because Israel left black mm -hmm. and came back white. Yep, the Bar and the Saw, he was assassinated and two weeks after that. And was a dot. And, that, and after they was assassinated, they placed Hosni Mubarak. And Hosni Mubarak was there since the last person said it. The Israelites left black and came back white. That's why they're still fighting for the land today. You had everybody from Helen Thomas, who was a press, um, main press um, lady who worked in the White House, yep. told them to get out of, get out of um, Israel, yep. go back to Europe. Y'all are occupying. Yep. That's why they fight like they fight. You see, all this prophetic as well. We're gonna read about the strangers that inhabit the Lord's land. Why First Samuel chapter yeah. two, verse thirty-two. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation. And all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. Ooh, prophecy about strangers or enemies being in the land of the Lord. Check out the Zechariah 9 and 6 as well. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 6. So it's, it's prophetic that the true children of the promise will be scattered into their enemies' lands, and God's enemy will be in his land. And the reason we were scattered is because we picked up these other ideologies and philosophies you know, and started and got away from our God, our power. And that's why. This rules everything. First, I mean, uh, Zechariah 9, verse 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Oh, Ashdod. Who? And a bastard. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. And that's in, that's in Israel today. That exact, that exact city that he's talking about. So that you know that those people are considered bastards to the Lord. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. And let's, let's, let's move forward into the New Testament. Revelation. Notice that Revelation is a revelation of who the world calls Jesus Christ. Correct. And just one, it's just one thing. The people who claim they are Jews 
don't even believe in Christ, the greatest Jew to ever grace the planet. But the trip off what he say about that. This is prophetic. Revelation 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulation mm -hmm. and poverty. Mm -hmm. Thou art rich. That's Christ talking to us, saying he know the hell we catch in the tribulation, how poor we are, our poverty. But guess what? We're rich because we're the most spiritually rich people on the planet. The kingdom of heaven is to us. But thou art rich. Check this. And I know the blasphemy, which means a damnable lie. Damn and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Ooh. And are not. And are what? Or not. Mm. But are the synagogue, meaning chief house of Satan. Mm. Trip off that. So, so Christ say, you know, he's prophesying that he know the lie of those claiming they his people, they are not. But they are the house of Satan. Because understand, and, I'm going to and, 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 and make no mistake about it, these people that come up out of Khazaria, the Caucasus Mountains, before they was in Mount Sia, but when they, after they took over the Caucasus Mountains and the lands of Japheth and all that, make no mistake about it, they're on the record as being called the serpent people. They are called the serpent people in history. Do a Google search and type in serpent people. You're going to see it's the people that came out of the Caucasus Mountains right mm -hmm. there. So Christ, Christ identified and said, look, I know your work, your tribulation, your poverty talk to his people. Because he know they're going to go through. Right, but you're rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and, and are what? not but are the synagogue of Satan. And there was no such thing as uh, basically what you call the Caucasian Jews in the 8th century A.D. The only family that on record, if you check the uh, files of Josephus, the only Edomite that converted to what you would call the Torah and the Tanakh was Herod and his family. Other than that, they kicked everybody out of other Edomites up out of Mount Seir. They had to get down and lay down. And that's how Herod the Edomite was on the throne of Jerusalem when Christ was born. Exactly. Rome gave it to him, man, but you got to go back into the history, into the book of the Maccabees, and find out what happened. All right, this is Revelation 3 and 9. That's another witch. Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. And are what? And are not. Mm. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now, I'm going to go into a, um, let me see that um, invention of the Jewish people. Um, I'm going to let this brother over so you get a snapshot. This is a, a guy who is a current professor at Tel Aviv University and a historian. His name is Shlomo Sain. He's a Jewish man. All right? He's a Jewish-born man in Israel, or Israeli. Israeli. All right? Israelized is what I call it sometimes. Yeah. I'm not going to be, you know, demeaning to nobody. I'm going to go in here and read you what he wrote on record real quick. It says right here, it says by arguing that the Jews have never been genetically or otherwise a people. Those people that claim they are Jews, he said they have never been genetically or otherwise a people. Deuteronomy 32 and 21 say the Lord was going to provoke us to jealousy by those who are not a people. Yeah, exactly. Those who are not a people. This is one of those not a people telling you that they are not a people. Trip off that. Now here we go right here. It says much needed exercise and dismantling of nationalist historical myth. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now look what he says. I'm, I'm gonna read the back of it real quick. It says that the historical tour, the invention of the Jewish people, offers a groundbreaking account of Jewish and Israeli history, exploiting, exploding the myth that there was a forced Jewish exile in the first century at the hands of the Romans, Israeli historian Shlomo Sand argues that most modern Jews descended from converts. Converts. And I, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. And I just gave you out of the Jewish encyclopedia in two places. To say ancient Israelite is a Jew is incorrect. It's incorrect, it is. And then it said that most of those people converted in the 8th century. It did. All right? And that 92% of them are Ashkenazi, mm -hmm. or Kazars. You've been lied to. You've been lied to. 
you are the chosen people of God. She need me there on the table. All right here. We got this article from a chief rabbi in the state of Israel confirmed Ebos as Ephraim. Ephraim being one of the uh, sons of Joseph, a tribe by the Israel. So they're, they're saying that uh, the Ebo tribe, which is found in West Africa. Ooh, hold on. That's, that's in the history books too. We finna get it real quick. They are saying that an, an Israelite culture had been uh, found on the west coast of Africa. Where you Negroes picked up from? Where was the slave coast at? Mm, my nigga. Huh? What was the slave coast there? What was we coast. picked up at? West coast of Africa. We're going to do a quick zoom, y'all. See if we can get it. I might be in the light source. But we'll see the Igbo people we finna read about now. You can hold that, bro. I might ask you to read that bottom part that's highlighted right there. Since you got the book in your Chief Rabbi of the State of Israel confirms Ebos as Ephraim. September 6, 2006, Ebos on the west coast of Africa in Nigeria that moved to Israel were, were recognized by the Chief Rabbi in Israel after receiving a letter from the Ebo Rabbi Ben Daniel on the behalf of his people. We in Israel today believe that this is one of the most significant events to happen in the Israelite and Jewish community system. Oh, what was that say again? Israelites and Jewish community. See, they recognize there is a There's difference. A difference. It, is. it is. There is the people who are the people. They're more than Israelites. Israelite. And then there is the Jewish people who are converts. And took the political place in yeah, it. It's called, the, the whole political structure was called Zionism. Yeah. That, was, that, that has nothing Correct to do with with God's people getting their land back, that was a political construct put together so the serpent's people can get a foothold in the promised land. That's, what, that, that good work, that's what all that was about. All right, it says, it says Israelite and Jewish communities since the Falashas, Jews of Ethiopia, or the Kohanim of South Africa Limbo, for the first time, it's about this, for the first time the Hebrew Israelite presence has been confirmed on the west coast of Africa Woo. at the time that the Hebrew community became aware of the Falashas in 1836 mm. by Martin R. Delaney. Most Hebrews adopted the name Ethiopian as a part of their organization's titles, although there were no direct connection between them and the Ethiopian Mm. And we just read that in there about the, the Jews or the Falacious mm. meaning exile out there in encyclopedia. They've been dealing around there for over 2,500 yep. years. Yep. All right? Understand that. And then, so, what you need to be part of that. Look at the next paragraph um, where it talks about how they made a connection with the language. Because what they did, they used anthropology. They went into the tombstone. I got it right here. It says, it says they also confirmed that most of the slaves, All right, that means the majority of them, large majority, they also confirmed that most of the slaves brought to the Americans came from Nigeria, hence the term Niger, as we get nigger from, right. which is a Latin word which simply means dark skin. Acts 13, Simeon Niger, or nigger, and he was a Jew and later becoming a derogatory word. Let's read that again. They also confirmed that most of the slaves brought to the Americas came from Nigeria, hence the term nigger or niger, and later became a derogatory word. So in this confirmation of our brothers, the Ipo, that consists most of the tribes of Gad, we disagree right here. Yeah, we disagree with Gad, the Gad, Zebulon, and Ishikor is just a tip of the iceberg. Because in this confirmation, it confirms the beliefs of, of many of the Hebrew Israelite communities. Which are one of the communities as we, as we are. In the United States. In the world? In the United States. That they were brought on slave ships. Woo! Please read the Deuteronomy 2868. That they were brought on slave ships from the west coast of Africa, mainly Ghana and Nigeria. 
in the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So this is what the chief rabbis going on record state. This is what your rab your Jewish rabbis are saying. What well, we've been teaching for years, what the elders that came before us been teaching for 30 years, 40 years, and the elders before them, that we are the people of the book. But see, the Negro won't believe it unless somebody else of, other than his persuasion come tell him. Now right here, what we have as a witness to what the brother is talking about as well, he's gonna probably give you the um, other information out of this book, but also it tells you that there was ancient, well, I'm letting him read that. But um, right here, it shows, if you can see it, this is from Ancestry.com, one of the largest search engines for family history, all right? It's connected through all kinds of databases, um, dating all the way back and across into Europe, all right? And the Asian and other parts of the world. It tells you that the slave immigrants from West Africa doing everywhere from 1600 all the way up to 1850, right. the people that was part of that trade that was on record, on ships, were Wauda, Ouda, or Kwauda, and Benai, which are all those West Coast that we just read. Now you can probably read that real quick, that where I got highlighted. That's a French way to say Judah and Benjamin. Because they didn't have the W sign. And what's so funny is, the French are over on the West Coast, slave coast of Africa right now, going to war with all those West Coast of, of African nations in which remnants of us are still there. Right. Ghana, Mali, Timbuktu. I'm going to read this about the Bible prophecy that he was talking about real quick. Okay. About us going into captivity via cargo slave ships. First one is mentioned in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. I'm going to read 64 and 68. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. That's what you make all your idol gods out of. And you bowing yep. down to church then yep. every Sunday. Yep, wood and stone and the cobbles, I mean wooden crosses and cobblestones. Verse 65, and among these nations shall thou find no ease, mm. neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee their trembling hearts and felling of eyes and sorrow of mind. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, meaning captivity, again with ships. With what? With ships. So you, and you know, if you know the continent of Africa, which I know my professor and a lot of people do, you don't have no need for no ships to move no slaves across. You can walk from Israel to Egypt. All right. So he's talking about another captivity, but this captivity will, will have to be taking ships to this captivity. Sounds like the transatlantic slave trade. Exactly what it sounds like. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt captivity again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So you're not going back to the literal Egypt. You're going to the biblical understanding of Egypt, which means house of bondage. And all you got to do is read Exodus 20, verse 2 for that. And it calls Egypt the house of bondage. And there ye shall be sold mm. unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you or redeem you. Luke 21, 24. This is Christ talking about these same people, the children of Jerusalem. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive, that's a slave, mm. into all nations. Mm. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, meaning strangers. Which we just got through talking about that. The yeah. Jewish remember, people. Remember the Lord say I, there should be a stranger bastard. or a bastard or an enemy in my habitation. Christ saying the same thing right here. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now right here, we're going to take a quick, quick look. We'll see right here. Read just a little bit further to this document. And then you got those page numbers. 11. 11 shows that slave ad, which you just read. Yeah. You put that up while I read this. And then I'm going to get to that right you too. Those that said you should be sold unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women. Slaves. Read that insert when you get a chance to get to the zone. Bond men and bond women. The name of this book right here is called Ebos. Inc which includes over, over 
25% African American, Hebrew exiles from Israel. The majority of us was taken right off this slave coast of this West Coast right here. And that's what the chief rabbis had confirmed. The chief rabbi confirmed it. This bro right here confirmed it himself. Now, he being, was... being an Ebo himself. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead and read that insert real quick. 11. That's that, that right here. Right here. Uh, this this is a uh, right here. This is uh, what they used to do, you know, to sell us an ad to be sold, auction, right? <laughs> to be sold on board the ship, Bassey Island, on Tuesday, the sixth of May. Next, at Abley Ferry, is a choice cargo of about 150 fine, healthy, fine Hebrews. Mm-hmm. Just, what they say, just, uh, just arrived from the Windward and Rice Corp Company. The utmost care has already been taken and shall be continued to keep them free from the, what is that, Lo- the lice and all this stuff. Lice, danger of being infected with the smallpox, no boat having been on board, and all other communication with people from the Charlie Town Convention. They're showing you they got a healthy stock of 150 Ebos. Uh, sound like they almost said Hebrews. That's what it is. I say Hebrews. Hebrews, right there. But ye mm. shall be sold unto your enemies for buying men and buying women, and no man will redeem you out of it. That's what the return of Christ is about. And I understand the reason why they made that connection. Historians, um, with the Igbo spelled the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, society communicated through secret Igbo writing called the Sibi. That's on page 45 and 45. They had the ancient writing. They found that same symbols discovered engraved in a number of African American tombstones in Virginia. See that? That that writing of the Ebos? Or Hebrew exiles? Exactly. Why is it that they find the same writing style on the tombs in Virginia of, of so called African American slaves? The same writing style right here. Exactly. The right style of the Ebos. Now we're going to hit you with some of this Rudolph, um, Rudolph Winston. All right? Because a lot of these things see the problem we have with most cases. Oh, okay. Um, we're going to page 845. Okay. okay, right here, y'all. This is from Babylon and Timbuktu. A history of the ancient black races, including the black Hebrews. From Rudolph R. Winston. Page. 84. Yeah, 84, 84 and 85. It's the second paragraph. Okay. Yeah, excuse me, I'll get some water. Okay, good. Get some water. Babylon and Timbuktu. And actually, this chapter is called The North African Black Jews. <laughs> Page 84. It's going to show how the prophecy that Christ said. We was going to fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive in all nations. That started in 70 AD when the Romans sacked Jerusalem. We, being the children of God and being warned of Christ, fled into Africa. To blend in with, the, blend other in with the other people that doors. looked at like us. Exactly. If not, all we had to do was chain, cut our birds and put on Roman garments. And we would have blended right in with the we Europeans. Blend right in with the Romans. <laughs> but now we had to flee amongst other dark-skinned people to hide because we would be a hunter. This is page 84 of Rudolph Windsor, Babylon and Timbuktu. It says, in the year 65 B.C., the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. So this is historical record. Yeah. And you can find this anywhere. Yeah. And um, Professor, you are a historian major. So. Yeah. Y'all looked up General Pompey when he captured Jerusalem. And it, it linked it up, 65 B.C. In 70 A.D., General Vespasian, look him up. And his son Titus put an end to the Jew state with great slaughter. With great slaughter. I mean, it was hunting us. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. Ooh, so getting hung, nailed to crosses, raped, castrated, the same thing that went down to slavery here. He was catching that same hell in our land under the Romans. And this is the, during the period when Christ was born. Hmm. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa 
Ooh. fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. So that's what, pro that's what Christ prophesied about. The slave markets were full of black Jew slaves. And y'all, that's a million families right there. Mm -hmm. they ain't just a million individuals, that's a million families that fled into Africa before the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. So the ancestors of these same families were picked up and rounded up as slaves on the slave coast. Correct. And we and we have the migration chart from Jerusalem mm -hmm. to the slave coast. The show. Go ahead and grab it. Go ahead and grab it now. Go ahead and show it. This right here is Hebrewisms of West Africa. From now to Niger with the Jews. By Joseph J. Williams. And on the back, on page 325 of this, it gives an actual migration chart, one of the routes that we took, leaving them out of Jerusalem, and how we ended right up on that Gold Coast with the brother read earlier, Wauda mm -hmm. and Benai. This is the exact coast of which slave merchants call the Slave Coast. It points you. Now this is Jerusalem up here. We went from Jerusalem down through the east coast of Africa all the way over to the west coast of Africa. And we were picked up. We were picked up in. We kind of jumped the gun on that one, but I couldn't avoid, I couldn't help yeah, yeah, it. on top of Rolling with spirit. And it says from now to the Niger with the Jews, from East Africa to West Africa. We all know the Nile River is in Egypt. The Niger River is in West Africa. Correct. Nobody call you nigga. And understand the, the um, Abraham covenant will cover from the Nile all the way to the Euphrates. Yep. The land mass out the book that the brother showed you earlier mm -hmm. in the beginning of this video series. So right now we're gonna hear that um, J. A. Rogers with that nature um, um, nature knows no color line. Thank you, thank you. Nature knows no color line. J. A. Rogers. Page one. I think it's page one twelve. So we're going into. Uh, Sorry about this, um, everybody, small pause. I didn't have this page number written down in the bibliography page, as I did the others. There you go, right here. We got it. Okay. Uh, I'll break to the most high. Uh, page 122. J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line. This brother lived in the early 1900s. This is a black queen of England on the front. Her name was Charlotte Sophia. We got history on that too, showing how black folks ruled uh, Europe during what you call the Dark Ages. Correct. All right. Now this is page 122. It's also going to a lot, of, a lot of history, like how you know black Jews were running Europe and all this. But right here, it says, as was already said, the ancient Jews who left Egypt must have been quite Negro. Woo! <laughs> back to that again? <laughs> <laughs> then we read. I mean, we showed the pictures and all that. And so Joseph understand again when his brothers came to see him, didn't even recognize yeah. him. If he was European, he would have yeah. been noticed instant. Yeah, yeah. It said it must have been quite Negroid after mating with Egyptians and Ethiopians for centuries. They were probably even originally Negroes. Abraham, according to the Bible, came from Ur of the Chaldees. Uh oh, there it is again. Yeah. Not even a biblical source this time. Yeah. Called so that's God Free Higgins yeah. and this brother. J.A. Rogers, who, two lived, different. who lived during 200 years of point. Same, same thing. Abraham, according to the Bible, came from Ur of the Chaldees. Chaldea was the seat of Sumerian civilization, which was long considered to be white Aryan, but it was Negroid. Mm. <laughs> but it was Negroid, says uh, Spearing in the childhood of art. The discovery, he says, was very disconcerting <laughs> to literary historians. They ain't and, like to hear the truth. You know, philosophers for that race was proved to be not a branch of the civilizing Aryans, nor of the gifted Semites, but of a Negroid people, having affinities with Mongols. Delufoy also in his research says that the Elamites, Elam, not Edom, Elamites, who once dominated in that region were Negroes. One of their kings is mentioned in connection with Abraham in Genesis 14. Strabo, who lived in 30 BC, says that the people of Western Judea 
or part Egyptian ancestry because they've been there made back and forth. It's like how we are here. But he says, although the inhabitants are mixed up, thus the most prevalent of the accredited reports in regard to the temple of Jerusalem represents the ancestors of the present Judeans as they are called Egyptians. This was in 30 BC. <laughs> Check this out. Long before. Check this out. It says, it says they were called Egyptians. It says right here, it says Tacitus, or Aeneas Tacticus, who was a Roman historian of about 90 AD, so after the fall of Jerusalem, says many assert that the Jews are an Ethiopian race. And then we just read that Acts 21, and Paul was thought to be an Ethiopian, I mean an Egyptian. You see that? But these are all dark races, they looking like Exactly. So the, the, in the ancient world, even white men knew who were looking at Jews of their day, they were under the impression that we were spawned out of the Ethiopian. You, you wouldn't be looking at no Caucasian. He wasn't looking at his brother and thinking that. Mm -hmm. See that? Showing you that how outsiders looked at us were we were always, according to antiquity, according to prophecy, according to our culture, we had always been a dark skinned people. And that's even according to their historians. Alright? It says, um, it says, for Romans to have taken them for Ethiopians is clear indication of their color, since the Ethiopians were definitely black to the Romans. Mm -hmm. there, there it is. That, what you just said yep. was verified. Yep. Now look, I'm gonna run real quick back into this. Um, we got some maps though. Did, did I miss a point? So I want to go into this Hebrewism on page 326. Now, this is Negro land, but we won't be able to show that. Okay. So 326. Yeah. We got the Negro forward. land. Maybe maybe Azul might be able to get if we get closer on the map. Right. So the Negro land. Why you read this? This is part of the thing we was talking about as well about the, when that Mohammedism super. Came up, the Jewish communities that fought against those understand that it said that Negro the rain land. on Negro the land, land. Yeah, and that's and that's West Africa, right? It was called Negro land on the map, and that map is as late as 1650. Mm. Ancient map, Negro land. What it say, bro? And right here it says, and remember what we were talking about earlier when you had the superstition of Mohammedism coming in on the Jewish community. Yeah, yeah. When the brothers started converting over there. Remember I said there was a lot of battles going on. Yeah. Brother Zua had named off a few. Here go another one in the same book. All right, it says the reign of vandals in North Africa gave the Jews a, re a, a respite and incidentally afforded them the opportunity of Judaizing the Berbers over whom they gradually gained a dominant influence. Mm. The Judeo-Berber regiment reached its climax in the heroic resistance of Kahena, the Jewish Berber queen, to the en en encroachment of the host of Islam. So they went to war. Mm -hmm. While many Jewish tribes in course of time embraced Mohammedism, mm. at least externally. Others preserved their faith by treating deep threat, what is a family name? Treating. treating deep into the mm -hmm. desert and possibly into Negro land. The what? Negro land mm. itself. Mm -hmm. This may explain in part how the Jews early became the chief merchants of the Sahara and then connect the link between the Negro nations of the South and all great commercial centers in the Mediterranean coast. Mm, mm, mm. This right here is from Babylon Timbuktu, page 87, the Black Jewish Empire of Ghana. A lot of you brothers talk pump Ghana, and you don't even know the history behind it. Hebrew Israelites, well, uh, actually Ghana is a Hebrew word, which means war chief. <laughs> Alright, right here, the black is page 87, Babylon Timbuktu by Rudolph Winsor. We are almost done. We at the very end, y'all. Mm -hmm. So be patient with us who's watching the video. No doubt. We got up to 20 kilos. Okay. okay. It says, uh, the ancient black empire of Ghana was established in the western Sudan. During the colonial period, the western Sudan was called French West Africa. That's mm -hmm. why it was called Wauda. And Benai and, and Ouda, those are those were French, French ways to say Judah and Benjamin. All right. 
The northern boundary of this region is the Battle Island Desert. Book two, Rudolph Windsor, A History of the Ancient Black Races, including the Black Hebrews. All right. Page 87, The Black Jewish Empire of Ghana. The ancient black empire of Ghana was established in the Western Sudan during the colonial period. Mm -hmm. The Western Sudan was called French West Africa. French what? West Africa. And if you look today, they tell you if you want to be able to survive over there in Africa, because of the colonization, you have to learn how to speak English mm -hmm. and French. Yep. Where is the African language? Mm -hmm. Where did it disappear to? Mm -hmm. The northern boundary of this region is the Sahara Desert. The western and southern border is Lake Chad. Some rivers of this region are the Senegal, the Gambia, the Volta, the Bindu, the Lagoon. And last but not least is the famous Niger River. This river flows from the Guiana Highlands, northeast to the famous cities of Timbuktu and Gao. Then it makes a sharp turn and flows southeast toward the city of Benin in Nigeria. The spots you was talking about. Exactly. In the ancient times, the Carthaginians from North Africa penetrated the Sahara Desert and the Western Sudan during the second and third centuries BC, when North and Eastern Africa had amassed over one over a million Jews. Mm. Read that again. When North and Eastern Africa had amassed over a million Jews, these Jews began a continuous migration to the region of the Niger River. We just showed the map. He just showed them. Showed them out. According to the researches of Nahum Schlauch, the tradition of the Jewish traders in the Sahara stretches back to biblical times. Mm. Mm. So here go another mm. author, as Leo Africanus, as Godfrey Higgins. Yep. Remember, I'm, but I'm talking about that in my conclusion. Yeah. Schlauch continues, and it is not at all surprising to encounter in every part of the desert traces and even survivals of a primitive, I mean ancient, Judaism, which at one time played an important role in the whole region of the Sahara, mm. from Senegal to the very borders of Somaliland. As I have mentioned earlier, this region that extends across the entire width of Africa below the Sahara Desert from Senegal to Somaliland is known as the Sudan or Black Africa. Ooh. Between the second and third centuries, the black Jews of Arabia continued migrating across the Red Sea to Ethiopia. The largest exodus of the Jews occurred during the persecution by the Arabs led by Mohammed. He had said on his dying bed that he wanted Islam to be supreme throughout all of Arabia. At the same time that the Jews were migrating westward across the Sudan from Ethiopia, they also migrated southward from Libya Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco, for you Moors, to the fertile region between the Senegal and Niger rivers. When they noticed the spot they called where they picked us up was fertile. Mm -hmm. so the slave coast was fertile. All right? When the Jews from the north and east met between these two rivers, they established a confluence or crossroad in the West Africa, where men could exchange their culture, ideas, and merchandise. These Jewish migrations went on with great frequency about 300 AD. Ooh. And they continued with the utmost regularity for 1,200 years. Mm -hmm. So that's even before the transatlantic, showing how they was putting yep. the Israelites. And after Columbus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Columbus, 1492, you talking about 300, put 12 on it, that's 1,500. Mm -hmm. This is right there right, right around the time. Yeah. Could you stay right. the Abyssinian kingdom and all of those kings were still yeah. existing. 1492, there. when all the black Jews mm -hmm. got kicked out of Spain. Uh, 1492, when the fake Jesus, the, the white image of Jesus that you got up, Cesare Borgia, That's when his the father took the throne. 1492. Mm -hmm. the, was at, um, the Spanish. King yeah. Ferdinand yeah. and Isabel. That was mm -hmm. 1492. Yep. Just so happened the same year Columbus set sail for America. Yeah. All three events, Columbus set sail for America, the black Jews who was running Spain, who was known as Moors, fell, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, what else happened? And then the, the same year, the Pope and them took the seat. Yeah, and, the it was, years. and it was other kingdoms, other kingdoms that we was in that fell mm -hmm. in 1492 as well in Africa. Yeah, because, you know, the Moors kingdom was multicultural. It was mm -hmm. not so much as a nation like, you know, like, say, like Abraham and like that. They was Multi multicultural. All together. Yeah. But all that was going on at that time, man, it all was falling apart. And that's actually 
what happened in Africa as a whole, when you start letting, you know, colonization sit in, when you start letting people come in there and divide y'all, mm -hmm. divide us like that, mm -hmm. to the fact <clears throat> when you removed all the Israelites and all the people in the captivity during the transatlantic, which was the largest, you weakened Africa as a whole to the fact that's why the Europeans were able to come in mm -hmm. and then at that point take over. Yeah. Because you removed everything out of it. And the reason why it's not as what some would call advanced or technological as today, because you removed all of the great minds of history out of her. The people that you had that helped build that great country, that great continent, I should say, into the place that it was in Israel and all the other places, were removed. Yeah. By being removed, you remove the wealth of Africa with its people. Yep. The resources, and even today, man, they drain all the resources up. They get money off the resources, and they never redevelop the land. They drain the resources. Because they don't care about it. You feel me? To where now, that's all you see. But see, when we was set, when we had kingdoms set up on the continent of Africa, from Timbuktu to Mali to Ghana, man, it was some of the greatest, magnificent stuff they had ever seen in their life. Exactly. And, and to those that are listening and that seeing this, it was all because we disobeyed our God. For yeah. those that would ask why and how did that happen. Read that Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26. We, because at this time, you know, constraints, we can give you all that. Mm -hmm. But it's in the bibliography. No doubt. All right, check out uh, page 90, Babylon Timber 2. Oh, the first paragraph? Yeah, the yeah. Jews came into the western Sudan from northern and eastern Africa as a result of a chain of commercial and persecutory migrations. They were being persecuted. The Jews had settled among the most civilized people throughout the ages. Uh, they adopted new methods from other people and left their material, educational, and moral imprint among the people mm -hmm. with whom they resided. For many centuries, the Hebrews had employed great physical and psychological initiative mindset. They could not afford to be complacent or apathetic. They were hated. So apathy could mean cultural stagnation or death. The Jews imported into the western part of Africa a superior material, educational and moral culture soon after 300 AD. And this cultural advancement was not duplicated or exceeded until the ascendancy of the Mohammedan leader Mansa Musa of Mali in 1312 AD. But we see the Hebrews was converted into Islam. Mm -hmm. we saw it, we just Mansa see. Musa was a Hebrew. Mm -hmm. If you look at any ancient pictures of him, he got on a plain garment, he bearded out, and he got a crown on his head. Mm -hmm. That ain't no regular Africa. All right, it says, uh, in the third and fourth centuries AD, the Africans on the west coast did not possess the cultural superiority of the Africans on the north and east coast. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization because of the stability of the black Jews culture. The Jews were not absorbed into the autonomous population. In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were industrious and skillful people. And the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, Revenue agents, judge, architects, engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, mm. jewelers, mm. sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, and agriculturalists, etc. The black Hebrew kings of Ghana had two titles. The black Hebrew kings of Ghana had two titles. Two of them. Kayamaga, Master of Gold, and Ghana, War Chief. Professor Gabi says the 22 Hebrew kings reigned in Ghana before the Hagira in 622 AD, before Islam even was founded. 22 Hebrew kings had already been reigning in Ghana, 622 AD, and 44 had reigned by 790. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. You got a little more, Hebrew? Um, um, you fur account, you talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hit the fur account on Lagos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you yeah. want me to hit the end of this Timbuktu? Yeah, go ahead. 132. 132. One more on this Babylon Timbuktu. We almost done, y'all. 132, 133. Do Dr. Allen H. Godby postulates the position 
that black Jews were on the West African coast from Senegal to Angola, and they, the Jews, were driven to this area from the central Sudan by Muslim propagandism. See that? Having a knowledge of the black Jews in the United States, Dr. Godby arrived at this conclusion. This is what old Dr. Godby says. Check this out. These facts have peculiar significance. When the presence of Judaism among American Negroes is to be considered, hundreds of thousands of slaves were brought to America from this western Africa during the days of the traffic, beginning nearly 400 years ago. Mm. How much more of Judaism survived among West African Negroes in that earlier time? As persecuted communities, they were rather more in danger than other Negroes of being raided by war parties and sold as slaves. It may be considered certain that many partially Judaized Negroes were among the slaves brought to America. How many of them might still hold some Jewish customs? Here is another question. <laughs> Before Dr. Godby published his book, The Lost Tribes of Myth, Rabbi Matthew organized a Hebrew congregation in 1918 and proclaimed that the black people in the United States and the West Indies are the original black Hebrews. These are hundreds of thousands of black African Hebrews scattered throughout the United States, not only in the urban areas, but also in the rural communities of this nation. With the revelation of ample historical evidence, the authenticities, the authenticity of these black Hebrews can no longer be questioned. However, in regard to the purity of their Judaism among some of these Jews, that is another issue. <laughs> and that's because being that that religion was moved or that, right. that, that, that understanding was removed from you. Right. You see, at that point, you didn't retain it. So what you have now is an awakening of consciousness to research it, which is thank you, thanks to Professor, you know, <clears throat> Dorian A. Brown and Miss um, Jason in the honor class for, I mean, in the honor um, society allowing me to do this um, work. But um, I'm gonna read from y'all what happened with Farrakhan, because you know the Nation of Islam had been on the front lines fighting for Black liberation. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so it's it's it, it, it's it's prophetic. Even when you see these people who were stout Islam come out with this knowledge. Yeah. So he, this is what he reads. He says that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the Almighty God Allah revealed to him that the black people of America are the real children of Israel. Oh, really? And look, I hope we have <laughs> gave enough information to prove. I hope we proved that before, you know, this this guy here is saying that. Right. Hopefully you got enough ample evidence to come to the conclusion yourself. Before we, Before read, we even now. read what he talked about. But we just it's progressing through time till today. Mm -hmm. So we can understand what's going on in America today as part of the project we have to show where they are today. Yeah, and then we you know we also, you know, I mean, you know, we ain't dissing or nothing like that, but right. you know, Farrakhan is a very influential person within our nation. You know what I'm saying? So right. for the fact that he will come out and say that, you know what I'm saying? Lie. You feel me? Live and it's received. I mean, come on, guys. exactly. But he said that Honor Elijah Muhammad said that the Almighty God Allah revealed to him that black people of America are the real children of Israel, mm. and we are the choice of God, mm. and mm. that unto us he will deliver his promise, said Minister Farrakhan. It was a quote. The question says that somebody has usurped our position. Somebody has usurped our position. Or we call they coop. The coop, yeah. And what would the Messiah say? Those that say they're Jews and they're not. And so it says that, the question says that somebody has taken the promise of God to the children of Israel and claimed it for themselves. Mm. He said, blacks in America are God's people, not those who inhabit the land in Palestine. Flat out. Flat out. That's what Minister Farrakhan goes on record to say. So I'm just going to go and read the conclusion um, of this real quick. And I want to take again thanks um, again to uh, Miss Jason, you know, Professor Brown, um, Brother Malachi, Zeus, sat back there and doing all the filming and everything. And um, 
But basically, in conclusion, hold on. In conclusion, most people link the Bible to all manners of study. History, science, and research, which we just read from all these authors, the way to Leo Africanus, right. refer back to the Bible for a historical reference. And I think it is possible to know the whereabouts of these people. It has been shown that black people who identify themselves more strongly with their racial identity are generally happier. According to a study led by um, psychology researchers in Michigan State University, the study funded by the National Institute of Mental Health appears in the 2011 and 2012 issue of Cultural Diversity and Ethnic Minority Psychology, a research journal published by the APA or the American Psychological Association. Mm -hmm. This is a part of the solution to what has been a serious problem in the African American community and why this journey is necessary. To get a sense of how important identity is today, for instance, of what it would be like if one would suddenly lose their identity. Imagine if one forgot their name, or became a John Doe, if you will, right. lost all his documents, his social security card, his birth records, and everything. All right? All his documents proving who he was. What would that person do? How easy would it be for that person to survive, even in modern society? In early human communities, those without an identity were made outcasts. Without an identity, one has lost their rights to land, friendship, support. And this plight strikingly is familiar to the plight of the so-called Negro or the modern African American today. Yeah. So hopefully with this journey we showed you that the biblical people were people of color. All the way from the patriarch to today we showed you through evidence from the Jewish community who recognizes that they are a Jewish and a Hebrew Israelite community, mm -hmm. out of their own mouth saying it's fulfillment of biblical prophecy, mm -hmm. who they are today in America. Mm -hmm. And from other authors, other resources, hopefully we have concluded a work worthy of being called out. No doubt, no doubt. You go ahead and cut it, bro. What's Let me get that block in the building. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Abraham, Isaac, our granddaddy Jacob. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Abraham, Isaac, our granddaddy Jacob. I'm from the chosen seed of Abraham. Abraham. My forefathers got it on in the land of Ham. From banging with them Canaanites to learning their ways. Tell whoever they was lying, saying ignorance pays. Rocking skinny jeans and pink, then your spirit is gay. What you say? I bow to the great Yahweh. Or Yahweh in the ancient tongue. So check your history. Honey, now you're loving the heathen, and that's a mystery. These niggas rocking feds, and the others say salam. But peace in the original tongue, shout a bomb. Deception so thick you can chop it with an axe and you can see what do you believe if you can't look back? So I search my forefathers like Job, Aiden, and Aiden, come to find out they the ones that's on the pearly gates. So I'm a terrorist, believing in the coming of Christ. Yeah, I was shy, I paid the ultimate price. Cause we, cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Abraham, Isaac, our granddaddy Jacob. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Cause we go back before the slave ships. Abraham, Isaac, our granddaddy Jacob.